Hello, in video 6 of simple regression analysis, I'll be showing you how to do some residual analysis. Another term for residual analysis is diagnostic checking. Uh, it helps us determine if we fit the right model to our set of data. So again, I'll run a simple regression analysis. Let's go to data, data analysis, regression. I fill in the sales as my response. Uh, temperature as my predictor variable, labels in the first row, output, let's show that in F3, and I want to see um, standardized residuals and residual plots. Press OK, and here's the output that results, and I'm going to uh, show you a cleaned up version of this. Let's uh, get rid of this duplicate confidence interval output, and then to save a little time, I'm going to take some output that I already cleaned up and paste over this output here. And I paste it in the wrong spot. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so uh, here's our cleaned up version. Let's um, take our residual output down here and clean this up. I generally format this to like two decimal places just so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. Uh, here I have a uh, column of observations. I'm going to abbreviate that. And this is predicted sales, actually the Y hats. Uh, and here's my residuals. I'm going to abbreviate these. And these are my standardized residuals. OK. Now, um, I like to uh, find the min and max values of these numbers down here. So usually what I do is just make a little uh, notation and then calculate the min equal min and highlight the y hat values equal max highlight the y hat values and then I can copy this formula over for my residuals and standardized residuals. So now one of the things you do with residual analysis is look for unusual points so we can uh, determine if there are any outliers by looking at the column of standardized residuals any standardized residual at least two in absolute value, we'll consider that an outlier. If there is one that's at least three in absolute value, we would consider that an extreme outlier, very rare under normal curve theory. So clearly the, max, the min is negative three, and we see that's observation 18. So that is an extreme outlier. Now, in the previous video, we noted that observation 18 uh, on day 18 uh, had a high temperature of 77 degrees, but had abnormally low ice cream sales, $1,800, whereas our model predicted this ice cream sales should be about $2,500. Okay, let's uh, do a little more cleaning quickly. And then let's look at a residual plot. So when you ask Excel, you check that residual plot box in the previous dialog box, this is what you get for a residual plot. It plots residuals versus your x variable. And let's clean that up a little bit. Okay, so I know this is a residual plot. I'm going to get rid of that title. Um, I'm going to look back down here and I see the min is about negative 7 and the max is about 3. So let's rescale the y-axis here. Right click, format, the min negative 7, the max positive 3, uh, let's go up by twos. Uh, axis value, let's have the x-axis cross at negative 7. So it's out of the way of the points. And then under number, we don't need these extra decimal places showing. Let's change that to zero. Press close. Okay. And then for temperature, we should rescale that also. Um, I believe the lowest temperature was 60 and the highest was... 95, so let's rescale. Right click on the x axis format. Start at 60, go to 95, let's go up by fives. Okay, and then a little more cleaning. Right click in the plot area, format plot, border color, solid line, medium gray to match this medium gray other side. Um, I like to get rid of the outside border, so I right click on the outside, format chart, border color, no line, 
Okay, and then for the points, maybe gray circles, right click, format data series, marker options built in, circles, marker fill solid. Let's do a light gray, and then marker line is a dark uh, border around the circles. Okay, and we're almost done. I'm just squaring the plot. Y axis is about the same length as the X axis. Now I'm going to right click anywhere on the points and I say add trend line, press close, and it puts a horizontal straight line at zero. So that's kind of a reference line for us because we know that the residuals average out to zero. Um, okay, based on this plot, I'm looking uh, to check the assumption of independence. Now, a violation in independence would show some kind of curvature, most likely. Um, and there doesn't seem to be any curvature going on. We do see the extreme point, that outlying point, so we can also detect outliers in this plot. Uh, you know, e some people like to plot standardized residuals versus temperature, which you certainly could do, and then you could clearly see if it passes the plus or minus two boundary line to, to denote outlier. Uh, so, yeah, that's maybe preferred by most people, plotting standardized residuals versus the temperature versus your x variable. Um, in addition, we can also look for the non, for the constant variance assumption. These points should have a band of uh, equally spread points throughout the range of temperature. And for the most part, I think that's true, except we have the one weird point here. Okay, in addition, because this particular data set was a time series, but we're not analyzing it as a time series at all, there still could be some time trends we didn't account for. So I'm going to take my observation number, which is the same as my day index, and plot it versus my uh, residuals. So I highlight those two columns, skipping over the Y hat column, insert, scatter, connect the points. Let's get rid of that legend, get rid of grid lines maybe. And uh, I'll just do a quick uh, editing of this. So right click on Y axis format. Remember it goes from negative 7 to 3. Let's go up by 2's. Let's cross at negative 7. Let's get rid of the extra decimal places. And let's have our X axis end at 20. And we go up by 5's is fine. Press OK. And a little more cleaning. Remember, this is only true for, um, you only make this plot if you were dealing with the time series. Okay, I need to add axis labels in this one. So this is my day index. And this is my uh, residuals on this axis. So this is uh, to check independence of the residuals over time. I won't clean up the points this time, but um, we could also still add a uh, line at zero for a reference point. However, if I do, if I just add trend line, right click, add trend line, it's not going to give me a horizontal line at zero. So a little trick you could use is plot a horiz horizontal line by adding a new series. So zero, zero, this is my x, I'll call this day, and this is my residual value. I'm just plotting new points. So at 0, uh, so when x is 0, y is 0, and when x is 20, y is 0. I'm going to plot a new series. Let's get rid of this uh, trend line in there. If I can click on it once, it won't seem to let me. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay, so I right click anywhere in the plot area, select data, add a new series, the x values are right here, the y values are right here. Press OK, press OK, and I right click on that new line, format, marker options, none, line color, solid, how about a gray, and line style, a little bit thinner, and uh, that's OK. Right click on the plot area, format, solid, and yeah. Okay. So uh, we basically we're trying to make a judgment if this looks like a random process or not. Are the points uh, independent of each other? And maybe that's the case. It's a little bit hard to tell. We have this outlier showing up as abnormal again. But uh, this 
could be reasonably a random process, I think. If you wanted to check further, you could do a runs test or you could do a eye chart or a moving range chart. I think we would clearly have a special cause of variation going on right here though. Maybe there was a big rainstorm that particular day and people just didn't go out to buy ice cream. Okay, so I think that's good enough for residual analysis. Um, later on in the course, we will be also checking the assumption of normality. We could make a dot plot of the residuals or a histogram and check uh, if they have a mound shape that they came from a normal distribution. Okay.